This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. Alright, so a lot of people seem to like and dislike two of my more recent videos on buffs and nerfs for Borderlands 2. Now, keep in mind, guys, that those videos were meant to be satirical in nature. After all, I think we can all agree that the North Fleet is just fine as it is and doesn't need a buff. That goes for the Unkempt Herald, Kanada's Laser, and the other weapons I mentioned in some of those videos. And of course, other weapons like the Devastator don't need to be nerfed and made worse than they already are. Today, I figured I'd make a more serious video discussing some buffs that I think might really improve Borderlands 2. Uh, while it's somewhat unlikely that Borderlands 2 will get another patch, it could totally happen if Gearbox decides to release the Borderlands triple pack on both Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, the Borderlands triple pack was released last November and included Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel complete with all of the DLC for all three games. Unfortunately, it was released only on Xbox 360 and PS3 and not the new Xbox One and PS4. Of course, those consoles may end up being obsolete if the new PS4, which is that PS4 Neo, um, replaces the PS4 base model, which... Man, I have a feeling that's going to be a disaster, but that's a different topic for another time. Before I stall any longer, these will be the top six buffs that I think would really improve Borderlands 2. Number six, fix the pearlescent weapons that need to be fixed. In no particular order, I'm just going to read off some stuff here. Um, Reduce the Bearcat's ammo consumption and give it a 5 to 10% chance to randomly perform a critical hit, dealing double the damage that you normally would. Um, significantly increase the storm's damage over time to put it somewhat on par with or make it completely superior to the infection pistol. Um, remove the capped fire rate and reduce recoil on the Unforgiven pistol, or better yet, increase the base damage of the Unforgiven pistol by like 300 to 400 percent. Um, boost the Wanderlust's accuracy and improve the base damage, or give the Wanderlust more projectiles per shot with a 5 to 10 percent chance to perform a critical hit dealing double the damage that you normally would. Um, give the Stalker synergy with Gage's close enough skill. And this isn't a pearlescent, but this would also really help the Madhouse Assault Rifle as well. Um, allow the Carnage Shotgun to synergy with grenade damage bonuses, or allow it to gain a damage bonus from both Shotgun and launcher damage bonuses, um, improve the Godfinger's fire rate, and remove the bolt action ability altogether and make it a semi-automatic Jacob sniper rifle, and increase the damage of the Tunguska and remove the ability for it to damage player characters. Otherwise, I think guns like the Butcher, uh, the Becca, and then some of the other Pearl Essence that I didn't mention are pretty much fine as they are. Number five optional ultimate vault hunter mode so right now if you go beyond level 50 you pretty much are forced to play in ultimate vault hunter mode this is mostly because enemies can't go beyond level 52 in regular true vault hunter mode uh, now ultimate vault hunter mode is significantly harder than true vault hunter mode enemies have more health their health is constantly regenerating and slag is essentially required to be successful uh, and damage over time effects are pretty much useless. My thinking is, why don't they make it so that after level 50, the in-game enemies will continue to scale with your player character's level in true Vault Hunter mode? And this actually might make it a little better for new players to slowly ease them into Ultimate Vault Hunter mode by giving them a less risky way to acquire the legendary guns they will need to make Ultimate Vault Hunter mode a little bit easier. Uh, I honestly don't think that this would be particularly hard to do or to like perform this, uh, I guess, patch or whatever, as they're already doing something similar with enemy level scaling in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode already. 
and the only thing that I could foresee being a problem is that the damage scaling might have to be rebalanced to accommodate the lower health values. But even still, that seems like that is something that they could tweak by changing a number or just a few different numbers. Number four, golden chests, golden keys, and how both of those things can be used to acquire some, but not all, legendaries. And maybe this is just me speaking here, but I honestly think that shift codes and golden keys are... I'm sorry, but they're useless, um, especially with the current state of most E-Tech weapons. Uh, now, that's not to say that you can't get some good purple rarity weapons from the golden chest, but why do I want to deal with the hassle of entering a code to get something that I can get to drop somewhat regularly by just playing the game on some of the higher level difficulties? And really allowing for certain legendaries like maybe the Shredifier or other weapons that don't have a designated drop um, to be acquired from golden chests uh, would make uh, figuring out when the new golden keys are available or it would at least get me somewhat psyched for when golden keys are available. Um, now, I don't think you would want people to be able to use golden keys to get legendaries at, like, say, level 8, but I don't see a problem with this happening for characters over level 50, especially once people start to go after and farm for all of the different legendary weapons in the game. Uh, plus, this is a great way to get an excellent gun for a couple of levels until you need, end up needing a higher level weapon once you reach, like, level 61 or level 72 or whatever. Number three, fix assault rifles. Now, this is probably the simplest thing to do, in my opinion. Uh, Non-Jacobs assault rifles adjust the critical modifier to twice the base damage, as opposed to 66% of the base damage, or whatever it currently is. Um, now, for Jacobs assault rifles, take it from two or twice the base damage to 2.5 times the base damage, or whatever the critical modifier is for Jacobs pistols. Um, this tweak would put a lot of assault rifles on par with both SMGs and pistols in Borderlands 2 in terms of critical hit damage. Um, another buff might be to boost the base damage of every single assault rifle in the game by anywhere from 5 to 15 percent uh, to at least match or put them on par with both SMGs and pistols. This would really help a gun like the Shredifier, which is currently inferior to the Infinity which has both superior DPS, I think it's even got better base damage, and let's just be real, it's got way better ammo consumption than the Shredifier. After all, you really can't compete with infinite ammo. Now, to be totally honest, I'm not really sure why Gearbox made assault rifles bad in the first place. Uh, after putting a little more time into Borderlands 1, I would say that assault rifles, pistols, SMGs, and revolvers are all more on par with each other in terms of, like, ability or just viability. Uh, maybe some SMGs are better in Borderlands 1, like you have guns like the Double Anarchy, but that's not really leaps and bounds beyond some of the other guns that are available in Borderlands 1. I don't know, Gearbox, if you're listening, please fix assault rifles. We've been asking you for like four years now. Number two, fix E-Tech weapons in general. Um, while I'd argue that you could leave E-Tech launchers as they are, E-Tech pistols, shotguns, assault rifles, snipers, and even E-Tech SMGs could all use buffs to their critical hit modifiers uh, and their overall ammo consumption. Um, I suspect one of the reasons that E-Tech weapons suck in Ultimate Vault Hunter Mode Plus, or think of like your overpowered levels, is because the way they are currently balanced uh, makes them not insane or absolutely overpowered in both normal and true vault hunter mode. However, making them balanced for the previous difficulties ends up making them awful in the later difficulties. Um, my suggestion would be to make all E-Tech pistols, assault rifles, SMGs, and sniper rifles consume one ammo per shot and make the critical hit modifier scale like the normal white, green, blue, and purple rarity weapons do. I don't think it should be the case that a Hyperion purple rarity sniper rifle has better critical hit damage on overpowered 8 uh, than an E-Tech Hyperion sniper rifle. Honestly, that is horrible. 
Now, for E-Tech shotguns and pistols specifically, you could half the ammo consumption and give them a 10 to 15% chance to deal critical hit damage. And this would be kind of like a random thing. So every 10 times you fire, uh, you would like get one, maybe two critical hits out of those 10 shots. And that would actually uh, be pretty cool, especially if it dealt double the normal amount of damage. Let's be real guys, Krieg shouldn't be able to make E-Tech assault rifles deal less critical hit damage than normal uh, non-critical hit damage. Uh, thanks to some of his skills and really fixing the critical hit modifiers to scale like the regular weapons in the game would greatly fix this um, and another thing is that e-tech weapons are supposed to be rarer and more sought after than purple rarity weapons like ie your regular purple rarity weapons um, i guess if you're squeamish about earlier difficulties you can make it so that e-techs can't drop at all or they can only be acquired through certain quest rewards uh, that you complete throughout uh, your first and second playthrough. Or if the base damage is too high on some E-Tech weapons, you could maybe reduce that by like 5 to 10% and like no more than that. I don't know guys, E-Tech weapons are just so good and I mean they're incredible right now. They could just really use a nerf. I'm sorry, they could use a buff. JK, by the way. And finally, number one, and that is going to be Axton the Commando. So, a lot of people would argue that Axton is the worst character in Borderlands 2. Now, it definitely pains me to say this, but Axton is probably the weakest of all six of the Vault Hunters from Borderlands 2. And yes, he's my favorite, and it sucks that he is not as good as some of the other characters in the game. Uh, now, Axton has a couple of problems. Uh, the first is that the weapon type that he specializes in is assault rifles. Now, if Gearbox decided to do the buffs that I suggested, or at least look into figuring out some kind of buff for assault rifles across the board, uh, honestly, they could keep assault rifles and him specializing in assault rifles um, as is. And honestly, I kind of don't want them to change that. Now, the second problem with Axton that we can definitely tackle here, and I think the gearbox could easily fix, mostly has to do with the skills. Now, from my experience, Axton is going to be dealing the most damage when he has his kill skills maxed out and active during combat. So, for example, you have Onslaught, which improves your movement speed by 60%, and gun damage by 30% when maxed at 5 out of 5. Of course, at 10 out of 5, you're getting 60% gun damage and 120% movement speed. Then you have Metal Storm, which improves fire rate by 60% and reduces recoil by 75% when you're maxed out at 5 out of 5. Of course, at 10 out of 5, you're getting 120% fire rate and 150% recoil reduction. You also have quick charge which improves shield recharge rate by 1% per second per level. So with 5 points you're getting 5% recharge rate and at 10 points you're getting 10% recharge rate. Keep in mind at 11 points you're getting 11% of your shield recharging per second. The buff that I would suggest would be to give Axton some way to have his kill skills have just like significantly more uptime. Uh, sort of like Jack the Doppelganger from Borderlands the pre-sequel. Um, and this would really be a significant improvement to Axton. And you wouldn't have to directly buff any of the other bonuses from his skills uh, at all. Really, one of the problems with Axton as like a raid boss killer character or whatever is that it's extremely difficult to keep these bonuses from Metal Storm, Onslaught, and Quick Charge active. And I would argue you really need these abilities to make him viable for raid boss fights. So I guess to quickly sum everything up here, um, if they made Axton sort of more like Jack the Doppelganger from the pre-sequel, I mean, that would make Axton perfect. But anyway, guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.